developers it is i titan hex and i'm here again with another tutorial you can see before you the event commands page and of course that is uh where we've been focusing we're gonna go ho over some more of these event commands and this time we're going into screen audio and video um and we'll possibly go into scene control if there's time so we'll see now to begin um here in the content section you you just have you have the basics nothing nothing super special here but uh let's see over here we have the screen okay <laughs> i'm getting a little off track so uh by the way we are using a different uh background right now which is fine um but right now we are coming up with this whole screen thing so uh the screen part of the game is basically just your viewpoint the screen the the image or not the image the screen basically whatever is being drawn or created on the screen is considered the screen and when you trans transfer to a new screen or a new map or you um, want some weather effects or anything like that it's typically going to affect the screen now we have different things for fade in screen fade out screen these are great between transfers um, Typically, you will see something like fade in, no, 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 fade out, transfer, and then fade in, which is pretty typical, especially when we right click and do quick event creation, trans, oh, quick event creation. Okay, it's been a little wonky. Ah, there. So, quick event creation, transfer, and we just choose a place, hit a direction. Uh, and okay, never mind. It doesn't do it in this one. So typically, well, sometimes it does. Anyways, uh, in this case, we obviously see that it doesn't, but you will, it's not a bad idea to put fade ins and fade outs between screen transfers. Uh, sometimes it gets a little finicky and breaks, uh, and it won't fade in or fade out properly. So just keep that in mind when you're creating them. But for the most part, they work pretty well for transferring between screens. Uh, there's, of course, the tint screen. Maybe you want to tint it. Uh, maybe you want the screen to fade out white. You can do it customarily like this. But it also is great for setting like night tones, sunset, uh, sepia filters, dark, normal. And you can come up with a few custom ones. There are some on the forums and things like that where you can check out some custom ones. Uh, and you can also just use tint screen to also... Uh, do some stuff like that, but there's also flash screen now flash screen makes it so that uh, the screen will flash instead of um, Fade or tint so flash screen is good for just setting up a nice flash uh, maybe a Shine of light or like a meteor hits or something like that. It is great for that um, You can figure out what to do with it from here now there's shake screen and you won't see a lot of shake screen. You kind of have to play with these, but we can choose the speed, which is how fast it shakes and power is how hard it shakes. So it might go uh, a low shake amount like this would go bump up, bump, 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 but a uh, high shake power would go like this. So you have a little difference in how you set that. And then speed is the, the rate at which it goes. And this is how long it shakes. So wait for completion. Of course, you, you'll have a lot of these check marks and in, in, in uh, tint flash and all that. Um, same with set weather. Um, wait for completion, obviously, depending on if it the trigger is inside a pro, uh, parallel process or whether it's in a um, action button or auto run uh, will determine what happens like. But for the most part, it just, if you wait for completion, then when it, it, it'll it wait the full duration to jump to the next line of processing in the event commands or in the contents. Um, so just keep that in mind. But for the most part, you have rain, storm, snow. Um, I haven't used these, these are new in MV. And I imagine they can do some cool stuff. Uh, there might even be a filter um, available in like system or something like that where you can change these yourself so just keep that in mind next we will take a look at the audio and video so audio and video is pretty simple um, these are your ability to change the background music the background 
ambience, the background, um, which is BGS, background sound, uh, or ambience. The uh, you can fade out any of these, so you can fade out the background music or the background sound uh, to make maybe things more dramatic. And then you can also save the background music and then later on replay it. So that's very useful for a lot of different things. Um, so save BGM and replay, all those are useful. Um, of course, background music here, background sound or ambiance. And then you have music effect, which is kind of like a fanfare sound. It, it's like that bump -da -bum, bum -bum 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 -ba -da that you're so familiar with in games like Final Fantasy. Um, those are considered music effects or Emmy. And uh, those are just short little quips of music to sort of give a flair to different events. Um, there's also like the bum 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 and things like that so organ mystery uh shock all those are sort of an example a game over would be a short sort of uh fanfare of music they're typically not meant to be looping like a play bgm or like a bgm would be um and they're not really and they're meant to be a little bit more dramatic so just keep that in mind uh, then you have the play se which is your sound effects uh and this is good for a lot of things um it's not a bad idea to find more sound effects, but there's a decent amount of stock sound effects available in the uh, list of sound effects and things like that. And then, of course, you have Play Movie, which plays a um, movie put into the audio folder and into the, well, not the audio folder, the video folders. Um, and these will be found in the sound and music folders, audio folder uh, here. This is in the video folder. Um, but in general, these are pretty simple and easy to go over. So since we are going over music and whatnot, I'm going to real quickly jump into the sound test. And we're going to go and check out some of the sound test. So in BGM, uh, these are your background music, background sounds, your ambiance, and things like that music effect your fanfares and things and your sound effects so the cool thing here is that we can change the volume of music and other things as well as say the pitch so the pitch would be how high or low the music is uh, if it you want it to sound um, a higher pitch like wee or something like that you would of course increase the pitch and if you wanted to play a little slower and a little deeper, like uh, you would, of course, do a lower pitch. And you can play with these just and, and get a whole lot of variance out of a lot of the music, which can be really great. And of course, your pan is your simple um, speakers. Uh, so this is the left speaker and this is the right speaker. Um, and you can make it sort of play more into one speaker or the other. Uh, it, using stereo volumes and things like that. So that is your sound test uh, manager and you can do some really cool things with the music and really m sort of vary up music and be able to reuse it a few times. So keep that in mind, repetition is always good in uh, games. It, it creates familiarity. So it looks like we have a little bit of extra time. I, I don't even think I've quite hit the 10 minute mark and if i have i'm i'm pretty much just right there on it so let's go ahead and jump from screen and audio video and you know i forgot timing well i, I don't i don't want to say i forgot timing because timing is basically just wait a certain amount of frames and it's really simple and you will become very familiar with that very quickly so wait's a pretty simple self-explanatory one um don't need to go over that but let's go into scene control now and scene control is going to definitely be the end of this because there there's a lot to go over in scene control. Well, there's there's a number of things to go over in scene control. So battle processing is of course picking a troop to fight. This is particularly useful for scripted battles or uh, you know boss fights and things like that, or for uh, random encounter or not random encounters, touch encounters. So this is great for touch encounters, um, and I can choose. A variable to set a um, oh I can do same as random encounter too that's kind of cool so if you're on a certain tile uh, it'll come up with a monster in the random encounter thing so they've really actually kind of expanded on this to make it even better so next is designation with a variable 
Uh, so you can choose which troop the player fights using uh, a variable, and you can maybe create a sort of random roulette battle uh, in an arena or something like that using a variable. So just go back over the variable tutorial if you want to know how to use those. And as you can see, the troops, of course, have numbers. And whatever number is being referenced in the variable is the troop that it's going to use. So just keep that in mind. Same as random encounter should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it randomly selects a troop from among those set for random encounters by map settings. Simple enough, and I'm sure if the event is on a region, it may account for that. I'm not 100% sure. Otherwise, it's probably just going to use the random encounter. But that's definitely something worth testing, so keep that in mind. Uh, then you have can escape and can lose. If you check these, uh, can lose means that a game over will not occur if you have can lose checked. And can escape means that the escape option is allowed inside of the uh, battle on the left when the, the battle first starts. So that's super useful. And next you have uh, can lose, which of course, well, I'll show you, it, it creates a branch. So if you escape, uh, we, we can do certain things like maybe propel the two characters away from each other or maybe make it so that you have to run away um, or, or something happens you lose uh, if you try to or if you escape you you take some sort of penalty um, maybe you get a coward status or something like that you can do that if you want to uh, if lose means when you lose the battle then maybe something happens uh, this is great for boss battles where you have to lose uh, or for maybe like an arena style game see how far you can get so those are these are pretty good for those it's good to keep those in mind um, so that's just battle processing next is shop processing and I can make it so that you can only purchase items but this is pretty easy we double click and we choose um, a an item um, from the list and we can do standard which is the item uh, the price that we put in or we can just set it specific using specify here and have like a custom price for certain ones. Um, I will be teaching you how to make a custom shop, but this is a great little setup and it does have some real advantages. So this is useful. Um, it's, it's a simple shop. There's nothing really that special about it. Name input processing, of course, is um, inputting a name, uh, changing a player's name or yeah, changing an actor's name, changing um, or, or adding a new name or anything like that. Um, you use this and a, a, op, a menu will pop up that you can choose um, to respell a, a character's name, just like a typical JRPG. So nothing special about that one. Next, we go to open menu screen, and this forces the menu screen to open. Uh, useful for... Um, something like an event where you would need to rechange your party or there's just some reason that you have to open up the menu or the game wants you to open up your menu to do something before something occurs this can happen in a lot of uh, typical jrpg battles um, open save screen this is great for if you want to create custom save points like maybe a crystal that appears before a boss fight and you have to you, you, that's the only way to save or the typewriters in resident evil save crystals a whole bunch of things uh you, you would use open save screen to do these and then you would of course disable um using system settings you would disable save access and then you can have it so that you're forced to interact with an event in order to save your game which can be very useful for setting checkpoints and things like that for the player uh, rather than a free save Next, we have the game over. So this just calls the game over in case we want a custom game over or we have our own battle system and we want to create a game over screen for that battle system. This right here, super useful. Does exactly what it says, calls the game over screen. And then return to the title screen, of course, just returns the player to the title screen instead of the typical. So you can also, by the way, use open save screen to do a custom menu with a save option. Uh, those are tricky, but it's possible. So this is just sort of the scene control, and that's basically it for that. So thank you again for just checking into these tutorials, uh, joining me on this adventure where you learn. Um, it's been a real 
awesome journey. I'm pretty sure that we will be doing system settings, map, and battle finally on the last one. And then from there, we'll get into the really awesome advanced stuff where we're creating systems and looking a little deeper into the system of the game, the, the, the entire software. We'll, we'll probably look into some of the, I believe, uh, some of these event searchers, character, event searchers and the resource manager and the plugin manager we do still need to go over. And we'll go over that probably in the advanced tutorials. So that's kind of it. Uh, thank you. Like, comment, subscribe. Show your support. Let me know that you're listening. Uh, I appreciate input and feedback. Um, I love to hear from you guys. If you want to ask questions to me or anything like that, please do. Um, if you would be so kind, I have a Patreon and I have some neat little rewards. Uh, I'm, I'm coming up with graphical rewards like tile sets and icons and badges and uh, a whole s a l like side view battler stuff cool stuff that's patron only I also will be having uh, releasing tutorials uh, early and I'll be giving you guys access to events uh, the the e like when I create a evented system I'll allow the patrons to have access to those systems um, and be able to download the uh, game template itself so there'll be some really cool stuff for you guys uh, for being patrons so check it out and thank you I'll see you guys in the next tutorial